Hey guys, what's up? Before we start the show, the six-week new client surge program is starting on June 13th. It's my six-week marketing masterclass where I teach gym owners everything I know about marketing and you will finish the course a marketing master yourself. So super excited for you to be able to own the marketing side of your business finally and all you need to do is click the link in the show notes and get all the info there. Enjoy the show. All right, guys, welcome to another special episode of the Shrank Coach Podcast. We are with Vince Gabriel, founder of Gabriel Fitness Performance and the Fitness Business University. We do this every month. We talk about business. We talk about marketing and um, and sales and retention and all the things that you really need to do to help your gym business. And uh, I will say, side note, I just talked to my buddy, TJ Lopez. I haven't talked to him in a while. I was lucky enough to, we finally connected. Um, we always had this kind of bi-monthly call and now we just been, he had a baby, opened another location and he is a, he is in Vince's group. So I did want to just mention that, you know, there's some real life stuff happening here and I'm seeing the progress firsthand from my buddy TJ and my guys over at, um, the strong varsity house, the boys at varsity house. And there's so many uh, people that I know that are in, that are working with Vince and that are doing uh, such great things. And, and so first of all, Vince, thanks for doing this. Well, it's funny. You're welcome. Uh, it's funny. You mentioned those two guys because um, you know, we're, the title of the podcast is, which I don't even know if we're going to talk about it, but how to <laughs> make $83,000 a month. It's like, if you are a, a seven figure, you know, gym uh, business doing small group training and the funny I and mean, this was not planned, but the two people you just mentioned are both in that category. I think we have 14 or 15 in our group. We have uh, close to 90 uh, gym owners in SPF Mastermind right now. And uh, I believe we have like 13 or 14 of them that are, you know, doing well into the seven figure mark and several other strong, you know, six figures. But the two that you mentioned are in that camp um, and doing, you know, phenomenally, uh, phenomenally well. Um, so yeah, they're, and they're good dudes. We're, I'm go, about to, uh, meet them out in, uh, Colorado Springs for our, for our next small group, uh, mastermind. So excited about that. Yeah. Look, TJ is opening another location too. And so he's doing really well. And I will say he had a baby six months ago. Um, and the importance that he places in the mastermind, like, you know, he takes time out of away from his family, uh, away from the business, right. To go to these, what do you do? Is do this quarterly, right? I mean, so, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, quarterly. yeah, he's coming out, out to Colorado. So, um, real life stuff here, guys. So Vince, wait, before we kind of go into some of this other stuff too, I, I was thinking about this today after talking to TJ and then we were talking about, it, I was like, yeah, Vince was in Providence and the Providence workshop you did in early may so that was that with perform better in conjunction with perform better and you had a two-day workshop there and uh that's different from obviously the people that are in your mastermind yeah. they're bought in i just wanted to get a, a feel for what because somebody's coming to this they're doing okay they believe in their product for the most part and but there's there's a problem somewhere they have a problem that they're trying to solve and they see this workshop that you did in May and they're saying, okay, I, I want to go here. This is, this is something I got the training down. Uh, I, I want it. I want, there's some things that aren't happening at my gym or there's too much happening at my gym and I need to figure this out. I need to go check out what Vince is doing. What is, what are you seeing with these people? Because Vince, we talked about this earlier, you and I personally, but COVID came, changed a lot of things. That's over, okay? But there's still things where people change. People are nervous. People, uh, the economy isn't that great. There's a lot of excuses we can give, but people are doing great. So what are you seeing from these people that are just coming to a workshop? What are the problems out there right now? Well, I would say that the, the main problem with those people is not the same as the main problem as the people that didn't come to the workshop. Right. <laughs> so you're like, you know what I'm saying? So like the people that came to the workshop, they're kind of like almost solving half the battle by opening their hands and just saying, Hey dude, I need help. Yeah. Like, because that's probably the biggest thing that like holds people back for, is not willing 
to be able to get help, especially, I mean, I'll be honest, like, so I'm 43. There's lots of gym owners that come across my stuff that are a lot older than me that have been doing it a lot longer than me and stuff like that. And there's a lot of them that will just, you know, be like, ah, oh, what is that guy going to teach me about running my business? I've been doing this for 30 years. But then there's another, like, I, I was one of the younger people. There was, it was an older group that was at this, that, at this uh, workshop. And the good thing about, and the hope that I have for all these people, and a lot of them are on with us now in SPF, is that they they did realize that like, hey, I don't, I'm, I am struggling. Like, I don't know what I know. And my business is not where it wants to be. And I'm going to put myself in an environment and position where people are having success and do it. I, I think that those people hopefully are going to be okay. What I want to talk about is is like, there's a lot more people that didn't go to that workshop that did. And what's going on with those people? And not to say that if you didn't come to my workshop, you're going to fail or anything like that. But but yeah. it's, the, the reality, we're speaking in general terms here. And the number one thing that that I see of why um, businesses uh, don't make it, especially in this space, is the owner just gets burned out. That's really what it is. And that's honestly, so SPF was built around that. SPF Mastermind stands for Simple, Profitable, and Fun. Right, which is an acronym that we created to help you know, simplify the business, make it easier, make it more profitable because most people are revenue focused. So we want to be more profit focused so they can take home more money and not have as many much financial problems. Right. And then fun, like they, they find the work that they like to do. They enjoy doing it. Right. Um, and uh, as, what does SPS actually stand for? It's it, it's protection against burnout. The sun it, actually. Yeah, I had, I had to look it up. Right. I didn't actually know what it stood for when I was creating this. Right. It stands for sun protection factor, right? That's what it is. Right. And so I believe like it's, you know, good uh, advice and coaching and stuff that you do and stuff that Coach Boyle does. Like all of that is is protection against burnout. And the uh t- Tony Robbins has a um uh, a line says the the number one chokehold on a business is the psychology of the owner. And I don't know that just like I, I probably said that a million times in my life. It's just like it just always comes back to like how you think about things, right? Because business is kind of like this intellectual sport. It's not we as like we started this with our muscles, right? Like we want to lift weights, we yeah. want to look good, right? And like oh, uh, you soon realize that like if you try to out muscle uh, it in business, you're not going to go very far. Um, and so I, so I think that that's really what the number one thing is and what causes burnout is, is lack of success, right? They're not having success financially. They're not having success, you know, with people meeting their staff is leaving. There's a lot of turnover. They're not having success with retention. Right. And it's just like, after a while, it's like, how much like can you take, like after a while, it's just, I've been doing this for so long and I got nothing to show for it and I got no money and stuff like that. And what I see um, with that group is the is the lack of business skills. That is what like, because because your your talent as a coach and your talent as a trainer can get you to a certain point. But the reality is a lot of times that certain point is kind of like almost this Pollyannish uh, start. Like every business when they're on the new kid on the block is going to get like kind of busy, right? And if you don't, like you should get really worried, right? But like everyone likes new. Everyone likes the new kid on the block. Yeah, yeah. When I opened GFP, we like exploded right away because it was just like, oh my God, they got turf in there. Like, oh, did you see those things? They're pushing them across the floor. What are those dumbbells? They got like a handle on it. Like the, they look like a a cannonball like it's like it was yeah. like it was like this anomaly right when we when yeah we and so we got like we got busy right because of it but then after a while like we got to like figure it out like we got to figure out how to market you got to figure out how to hire and i think that what i see the guys in my group that are having success is they're learning the skills that they need to learn right they're learning how to control their emotions that's a skill Emotion is the most toxic poison in business. Uh, to quote my friend Keith Cunningham, right? It's the most like, and so that is a skill, right? So the other day, like I worked on this with my kids, right? And um, I don't know if I talked about this on this podcast, right? But my son, um, 
you know, he had a, he had a jujitsu tournament and he lost his first match and, you know, he's like all upset about it and he's crying. He lost his first match. He hadn't lost in a while and he's all upset. And he had another match in like three minutes. Oh. And I, and I, I worked on this thing with him before where we call it like the five minute rule. And the five minute rule is, Hey, you have five minutes to be worried about this. You have five minutes to cry about this. You have five minutes to whine about this. And then once the five minutes up is you're done. And I gave him the timer. I took my phone out and I said, here's your timer, buddy. You got five minutes to figure this out. And he handed me the, the it was one of the proudest moments as a dad, right? He handed me, cause it's not about the win. It's not about the loss. It's about the overcoming of challenges and the, in challenging your mind to do it. And he handed me the uh the phone back 26 uh, 26 seconds later and looked me in the eyes and said i'm ready let's go nice and he went out and beat a kid that was better than him the next match right and that's like again i i don't care about the win i care about what did he learn he learned that you can't sit around and stew on shit forever you can't sit around and be like all whiny and sad about stuff stuff is so here's a, here's another thing um there is no person on this planet that ever existed that got by in life that didn't have any problems ever in the history of the world. Yeah. Right. Like, it, yeah. like the, it, it is like, it's a law. It's like a universal law that like, there's going to be some stuff that comes up. Right. And so it's like, we had to have this expectation of, of this to come up and the skill is taming your mind to be able to endure right to tame your mind to be able to go through some of this stuff i think back to you know covid19 right and how many of us had to endure a really really child i mean i believe that if if you got through covid as a gym owner right we're here's the thing like everyone's like talking about covid like i got through covid i got through covid like we got through covid as a gym owner like it's like it's really when you look back and think about it, it's like a big, it's like a, yeah. a feather, a feather in your cap. Yeah, <laughs> you able to do that. But the whole point is this, Anthony. I think it's like this this series of burnouts that's uh, caused by lack of success, by caused by an inability to learn the skills that they need to learn to grow in business. And that's all it is. Like it's yeah. not really that hard it's not rocket science it's like you can grow your skills in your mindset you can grow your skills in sales you can grow your skills like it, it's really about and honestly like i like have had success in my life because i i'm very very lucky and grateful of this but my number one strength is a learner that is my number one strength and my strength finders test is learning oh wow yes okay. Right. And so I like, I, I just like can read stuff and I can then I can apply it to my life. I can learn stuff and I apply it. I can see things that happen and I apply it. Right. And it's just like, that's just what I do. Right. So for me, it kind of comes easy. Right. But, but that's really the barrier of it. The barrier of it. It's just like, oh, dude, you just have to learn about this. And you have, to, well, you're having problems with managing people. Well, you got to learn how to do that better. You're having problems with leading people. Well, you got to learn about how to do that better. Right. And that it's really comes kind of down to people acquiring a certain level of business skills um, to be a high success. But here lies another problem that I think that it's worth talking about. And we're like totally off the beaten path here. Um, but I, uh, at one of our last masterminds, um, I talked about uh, defining success. And, you know, I, I, there's a lot out there on success, right? Like, it's like you look at, you know, is the Wall Street investor, you know, guy that, you know, makes two million bucks a year and he drives nice cars and he wears nice suits and he still lives in a big house, right? And you look at him and what is the aura of that guy? Oh, he's a successful guy, mm -hmm. Right. And that definition is society's definition of success, right? And I have a totally separate view of it. I believe success can only be defined by you, right? Success can only be by you. Everyone needs to create their own definition of what success is. So failure to me 
is growing a business so big that I can't take my son to jujitsu. Success to me yeah. is being able to leave it at four o'clock and take my son to jujitsu. Yeah. And I always use that as an example. That's just one, like one thing, but like, yeah, that's success to me. Success to me is having an endless amount of money that I can focus on investing in my health. Right. I can, I can, I can think, not think twice about whatever supplement I want to buy. I think about what food I want to buy, like investing in my, if I want to buy a cold tub, I go buy a $5,000 cold tub. Like that's investing in my health. Like that is success for me because I know, whereas what do you see? The guy that makes $2 million a year and eats like shit all the time and never exercises. Right. But, but that's, but that's not success to me. But on the on the, on the outside, it looks like that person could be more successful than the other person. Yeah, that's working out at two o'clock in the afternoon, right? So I think that everyone, you know, kind of needs to look at like where they are in their life, and define their own version of success. And maybe there's like a, you know, just I don't know, like uh, Dean Jackson has a, um, uh, is Dean Jackson's a marketing coach, and he has a great question. It's like I know I'm being successful when I, and then he bullets it out. Yeah. Right. And so, like, if you want to take this, like, I know I'm being successful when I, and then just write down, I know I'm six when I'm making a certain amount of money when I can, you know, be off of work at five o'clock when I don't have to work on the weekends when, I, and and also the, the the thing about this is it could change too. It could change, like as seasons of life change, that could change as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, I, in my book, I asked 50 people. First question was, how do you define success? I got 50 different answers. And go. one of the things with that and why it's important is when you define what it is, what's important to you, like that's that whole perfect day idea where you define your perfect day like what would be yeah. a perfect day that might be waking up at eight and then having coffee with vanessa and then taking the kids to school and then working and then you know whatever whatever that may be but then it's like well how much money is it going to take to have to do those things so yep. you can back into it but until you define it you're really not gonna truly know where it's like you know that map Right. That's going to be the map now. Now you can have those directions to. And I think what it does is I, I don't know if we'll ever, you know, get rid of the whole comparison theory. I think like it's kind of like wishful thinking of like, oh, never compare yourself to other people. Yeah. It's like it's kind of like a human nature to kind of do that. Right. Um, but but I, I do think that you're def having a definition of success uh, it makes you do that less where you're not a you're not as focused on what's going on outside. You're not focused on this, but you're focused on, all right. Um, but here's the thing. It does. Sometimes this stuff takes, takes a little discipline. It's sure. not the easiest thing in the world to do, to stick to your own rules and stick to your own, you know, definitions and stick to your own things. Um, so, you know, that's why in SPF, we do a lot of that for them where we help them. I, I think it's always helpful. Like I know when I went to Tony Robbins and I created this stuff for myself and I wrote out my purpose and I wrote out this, it was very helpful to have someone like walk me through it. And maybe that's just me. Maybe that's yeah. the, yeah. you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the crazy person I am that I need that, but that, that it's just helpful uh, to me to have someone yeah. walk through it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a really, really helpful thing for people that are struggling out there. Just like maybe part of your struggling is because you think you should be somewhere. Right. And you're not where that person is, or you're not where this person is, and you've been doing this a long time. But sometimes I think people need to look at, like, you know, you measure backwards. Like, look at where you were three years ago. Like, you were, like, about to lose your entire business. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And no, yeah. you're not happy with where it is now, but you almost lost everything, you know, three years ago. So um, I'm doing a lot of quoting of different people, but Dan Sullivan has the book, The Gap and the Gain, which I know, I think, I'm pretty sure you Yeah, read. yeah, yeah. And it, you know, one of the principles is, is like, always measure backwards. Yeah. Right? Always measure, you know, look at how far you have come versus how far you need to go and how much more, because the goalpost is always going to move. Absolutely. And, you know, I think it's funny we talk about you talked about comparing, but one thing I do think is kind of cool, like in something like SPF, is having a group like that that 
you're going to get support, but you're also going to kind of be up against the TJs and the varsity houses, right? Uh, you know, Dan, that, that you're like, oh man, those guys took Vince's advice. Now they're here. I, I sat on it last quarter. These guys just moved up in revenue. Look at this. I'm sitting here. I got to get my, my shit together because that's good competition. Yeah. That's a good piece of it because you're all in it together. I agree with you. It's human nature. We're always going to look at the guy next to us and be like, damn, they're doing it. And, you know, and you could get discouraged or you could kind of fall down and wipe wipe your uh, yeah, and the, off. And, and, yeah. And the best thing to do is to be f- fueled and motivated by it. Right? Yeah. To, to like, and that's a form of comparison. It's just like, oh, look where he is. Like, that's like, so I'm fueled. The guy that coaches me, like, I get he's killing it. And I was like, I got fueled and motivated, motivated where you know where he is. And it's just like, okay, all right, let's go. And like, yeah. sometimes like it's got to like light you up and kick you in gear and be curious about what they are doing to have such success. It's like that's where you want it. That's form of comparison, right? That's a form of comparison, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be negative. But the, the worst form of comparison is they're awesome. I suck. I, I'm i not doing like nearly as yeah. good as them, so I feel terrible about myself. Like that's yeah. that's not healthy. That's like what Michael Singer calls, calls a, a, a 100% cost, zero benefit, right? It's just like there's no point, there's no point in doing it. Yeah. Um, but there's a discipline of catching yourself like when you do do that stuff. So, but uh, you know, it's also, you know, okay. Well, you talked earlier about the title of the show originally was going to be $83,000. Yeah, we're not, we're not going to even get to it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if you think about it, that number is not just, you didn't make that number up. Uh, and, and, uh, for everybody who didn't think about it, it's a million dollars a year. And it's actually, it's actually a little less because nine hundred ninety six thousand. I know. I just no eight hundred and thirty three. What is it? Eight eight thirty three. Yeah. Eight eighty three 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 is a million. Yeah. Oh no! I'm I'm sorry. I meant I meant eighty three thousand times twelve is nine hundred ninety six. Oh right, right, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, but when when people are doing that, it's like the whole five, you know four minute mile thing. People are like, there's no way you can do that with just small group, you know, with some small group personal training. But then when Roger Bannister runs that four minute mile, now it's like, oh, he did it. I know I, I if he did, it, I can do it. And that's where this whole group idea, this group mentality, the group think helps. And that comes in, too, because now they're looking over the shoulder saying, DJ did it. Joe did it. Dan did it. Right. I mean, and now they're like, it's possible. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. There's definitely something to that. For sure. Vince, sure. before we move on to, though, I want to stay on this idea about current gym owners, people that are kind of in that, you know, they don't know. May, hey, maybe they're going to hang it up. Um, do you think a lot of it is this idea of, you know, fear of change, right? Of that, not just learning, but now executing on what they learned uh some things that be like well i can't do that in my market or i can't i don't have enough space or i don't have this what is that what you're seeing with some of these people that don't want to make those the 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 leap yeah i i think that it, it's interesting uh that how much people fear change it's like more it, it it's more uh, terrifying than most things is is to change and i think that you know the reason why that is is because of like uh, like uncertainty it's like a scary thing of like the unknown is like a very very scary thing and i think most people want to cling to some for it's like a need like to cling to that form of security and that form of certainty. Well, I've always done it like this. And you can kind of be blinded by that. You'd be blinded by like, I've always done it like this, but I know it's not working, but I've always done it like this. So I'm just going to kind of keep moving. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, you know, at some point it'll, it'll, it'll turn around. Right. And I, I think the reality is the most courageous thing to do, like is to make a change. Right. And that's, I think people like get very, very scared by that. So yeah, I think it's a really hard thing because you got people that, you know, have been doing, especially in this industry, they've been doing things one way for a really, really long time. And it's a lot of times it's very hard for them to come to grips with, Hey, maybe it's time to stop doing one-on-one training and try small group. 
because you can make four times more money. Maybe large group is, you know, really help hard right now because you have a thousand competitors and you're, you know, you need, you know, to get 30 new clients just to maintain what you have. And cause you're playing a volume game, you know? And so again, I'm not saying that, you know, that, that those two things are, I'm just using those as examples. Yeah. Right. But I do think people get into this. And the other thing is too, it's like, think about, I used to, I used to go through, I remember I got into a fight with my, when my dad was alive, my mom was kind of helping out at the gym. And when I first got started and I had this uh, office manager who was helping me and she was like a key person. My mom was at that point, she kind of got me start, helped me get started. But um, she at that point wasn't doing much anymore, but she was still like helping and, you know, once in a while. And I got into like a severe fight with my dad because my my mom and the office manager started like going back and forth and like getting into right like little nips right and it was like a little weird and um and I kind of sided with the office manager and I sided with the office manager because I couldn't imagine my business without that person. And I said, I would fail if this person, this is a part-time person, like 20 hours a week. I was like, I would fail. If that person left, I would fail. And this business would implode. That was the mindset that I had. I had so much stock in this person that I was willing to throw my own mother under the bus. That's how powerful it was. Because I believe that if I, if that change, if that circumstance change, I wouldn't be able to go forward. Same thing mindset wise with certain trainers. If I lost this trainer, the business would never, I mean, you know, big Tom, right? You know, yeah. that he was with me for 13 years. There staple. Was a, I mean, a, a staple, right? And here's the thing. When he left a lot did change, right? Yeah. And some of it wasn't the best kind of change because it was during COVID and it was a challenging time. Right. But it has created something way better for him. It has created a new opportunity for someone else. The business is getting back to where exactly where it was. Like it's like it's all works out. Right. And so I guess, and I just learned this recently. And I'm kind of, I'm actually, I'm not going to say I can't because it, because it's, it's my opener line for my mastermind meeting in July. So I can't do it. I'm sorry. Okay. I was, I really wanted to, and I was get, about to get excited and share it, but I'm not <laughs> going to, I'm sorry. Um, but that's the reality is you just, you just got to look at those like change is going to happen whether you like it or not. Right. And so you might as well not wait for it to happen naturally. You might kind of maybe get out in front of it and realize like, Hey, maybe this is a necessary thing that I need to do and have control over versus waiting and just allowing shit to happen to you and change. And that's why I think people really get, they a lot, they wait for change to happen on its own and they don't create the change that they need. And I, and I'm, and I'm guilty of this myself. I have made bad decisions where I have not made a decision, right. In, in spite of fear, in spite of hurting people's feelings, in spite of doing this, and it was the wrong decision because I just the change happened. It happened way too long. Way, way, too, way it, it, it took way too long for the change to happen, right? And then it didn't happen the way I could have controlled it to happen. Yeah. And so that's what I think people need to do is to understand that change is going to happen whether you like it or not, especially if you've been in business for a long time. And you just got to like be willing to make tough decisions knowing when you know change is going to be inevitable. So do you, do you find with, with, again, going back to this, this group of owners who are, who are kind of on the fence and we're at a point where, like you said, they started out great and then they're doing well, but they're not me. Maybe, maybe they're not getting as many clients anymore. It's not as new and, and they're kind of plateauing and they're getting burnt out. Is it, a lot of times a case of whether maybe they're afraid to let some of the control go. They feel like they're the only ones that can do it. Do they feel like uh, uh, their identity is attached to the business? So if they don't train every single person, it might not, uh, they might not feel like it's their business or uh, they might feel that again, that loss of control. Uh, is it, you know, why are you still doing the bookkeeping when you can hire whatever it may be like, what, 
are those roles that people seem to be afraid to let go of? Yeah, I so I, I think that uh, we're barking on. I already mentioned the business skills, right? And that's just the lack of um, learning and the lack of understanding what needs to happen. But I will like I, I just wrote while you were talking there and asking the question, I just kind of wrote down two things. One, I think that kind of moving forward with your conversation of um, not wanting to make a change, it really comes back to the ego, right? It really comes back to the ego of, of you know, looking at things that like my way is the right way. You know, this is the way I always did it, right? So that's number one. But here's another one that I think is is deadly. Um, and uh, it, it's interesting because I had a full day of consulting recently uh, with someone that, 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 that had this. And uh, it's complacency, right? It's like they're just kind of there and they've had some semblance of success and they're kind of going through the motions and they're like this and they, they, their ego is still attached to it, but they're, they're making enough money, you know, because to be comfortable, but they're just like kind of going through the motions, right? And I think that's like just as deadly, right, is to not focus on growing is just to be told because after a while, like that complacency is going to kind of spill out to the staff that it's going to spill out to the clients, it's just going to, it's an eventual, you know, decline uh, for it. And I, so I do see that a lot um, in the industry of guys that have been around a long time, they just kind of they, they get complacent, they're kind of, you know, slightly comfortable, they know they want to do better, but they're not willing to do the, the what they need to do or, or make the change. Um, and, uh, one of our, one of our members, uh, Mark Ennis has a line complacency kills. He has that all over his shirts. Um, and so I, I think that that's like another thing. And I, th like, I don't know why, you know, people get complacent. It could be comfort. It could be, um, I think I, I, there's a line about, um, how, uh, most people that, uh, have, uh, comfort, uh, on the on the other side of that comfort is 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 a lot of hard times, right? Because you're getting comfortable, like you're, you're everything's are good, or right, things are good, and it's just like I live my life, and this probably isn't good for my health, but I live my life sometimes like I, I never ever settle. Like even when I know things are good, like I don't like really think that they are. Right. And I kind of keep pushing, you know, forward and I'll always move forward. And I always will. Now, do I have chum trouble personally, sometimes stopping and smelling the roses and realizing, oh, my God, looking backwards and seeing what I built? Yeah, for sure. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I have this kind of productive paranoia about things that, you know, keep things stable and keep things moving forward. So I think there's kind of those two things, complacency yeah. and ego. Um, I feel like complacency is what really kind of did me in with five iron when my had my facility is that I got to a point. I loved it. I was like, this is kind of cool. I got a good schedule. I got some income coming in from the podcast from strengthcoach.com. I got all the side hustles going They're doing Things are good. I have my man cave down here. I have my potting green. I loved it, but I, and then I didn't want to do the work required to change anymore. I didn't want to kind of go through that. Like you said, you go through a couple of staff, you're like, you're, it's almost like you're over it. Right. And uh, so for me, I think there was a lot of that piece of it. And then there's, well, I want to do these other things in my life. And I want, and I will say, I don't know if this is the case, but I don't have any kids. I wonder if that was part of the fuel too. Like, I always think about that. If I had kids, would I be bartending at night too? just be like, I got to you know, I got to show these kids, you know, hard work. I got to make sure I got their colleges paid for. I got to do this. I got to do that. You know, I always wonder if not having kids was a little bit of like, eh, I don't really have to worry about too much. I mean, life goes on. I'm good. I'm good. This is good. You know, and that's not good. Well, you certainly don't need as much money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, you have two girls uh, too, man. You got two weddings to pay for. I know. <laughs> um, but 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 the other thing is too is is you know when complacency comes, right? Part of this is it kind of goes back to the business skill thing. So I'm thinking, as you said about five hundred, it's like, all right, and no, no one's saying that like you have to keep a business forever. Sometimes things are inevitable, and there's necessary endings, right? So maybe you sell yeah. it, right? 
but also maybe you don't want to keep the same situation. And that's a situation where, and I'm just like spitballing here, mm -hmm. right? But is that a situation where you would bring someone in to run the business, right? And give them an equity share. And now you have half of something that you don't necessarily have to do anymore that you're complacent about. But now you have someone that's, you know, bringing in the piss and vinegar, you know, to get it going and get yeah. it fired up and get it moving again. And then you can go over and do other things. And that's the business skill part, right? That's the business skill of recognizing that and recognizing, all right, I am kind of burned out. I don't really want to do this anymore, but Hey, this is an asset that I have and I created and I put a lot of energy and effort into. And I think that I can keep this thing going if I can find the right person to go do it and to go get it and grow it. That's a skill. It's a yeah. skill to recognize a talent. It's the skill to re realize that, hey, this business can be run without me, right? Yeah. And maybe it won't be as good without you. And maybe it will, won't be run as good. And maybe it won't make as much money, right? Um, that's okay, right? But it's still an asset that you created and and you just, but, but it's like either sell it or grow it. Like, it's just like anything in the middle is just like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I eventually just sold the gym. I didn't sell the business, but so it wasn't really for a lot of money. And then also, uh, I wish, yeah. And I, and I look back and I'm like thinking exactly that. Why, you know, I think I got tired of the couple guys that came in that I thought were going to be my guys and like be my Toms, right? My big Toms. And they didn't turn out to be. And then you get I don't want to do this again. I don't want to go through that time of interviewing people and yeah. training people. And then, so for me, I think that's where, where, yeah, and, and, and for you, it's probably a good move. It's like, it was a necessary ending. Yeah. Right. It's yeah, a absolutely. necessary ending, you know, for it. And, and for some people that's the right thing. And yeah. for, for, uh, for others, it's, you know, moving forward with someone else. But absolutely. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate you talking about all my, my off topic questions, but I just kind of felt like, with that group, I really wanted to get a feel for what this current, you know, crew of gym owners, what they're feeling out there. And, and, you know, the pulp, again, I hate to use post COVID, but it is a different world. And, you know, there, a lot of gyms closed. So a lot, there was a lot of opportunity for new gyms. A lot of gyms opened up and now people are, you know, the economy might not be as good, but I'm still seeing a lot of good stuff happening. Oh, yeah. A lot of people are out there making a lot of money. So it's out there. People 100%. know we got to take our health into our own hands. So I think uh, it's an interesting time right now, but there, there is um, a lot of gyms. And again, I have obviously my small population of gyms and of the, in relative to the, the country, right. Uh, and I only see, you know, from the numbers of what they're doing and mm -hmm. and everything like that. But there's a lot of guys that are doing very well and a lot of guys that are opening gyms and opening gyms with 100 members. You have Alloy Personal Training that's like opening up like they'll open up like 60 gyms this year or something like something crazy like that. It's like so it's like there's a market <laughs> There's some yeah. this is like when you think about it, how big the market is of people in their 30s to 50s that need to get fit and need to get in shape. It's just like, man, there's a lot of them out there. Yeah, there's a lot of competition. Um, but uh there's a lot of gyms, a lot out there that are doing very well. And if you're listening to this, um, know that be inspired by that. Like understand that there's a lot of hope and there's a lot of good things happening in the industry that you're in. And um you know, you just got to kind of find the right, you know, find the right uh, recipes, you know, for what your business is going to do to be successful. Well, let's finish up with that. I mean, if you want to make 83,000 plus per month in small group personal training, you got to start out with at least 20 new small group clients next month. Talk <laughs> to us about oh, that. that's good. What that a segue. Really good. Oh, that was a great segue. Yes. Uh, I do webinars uh, three times a year. I'm doing this one uh, coming up on June. Uh, I'm doing it twice, June 3rd and 4th. Um, and the title of it is how to get 20 new small group members in 30 days. And so what I'm going to basically talk about uh, the deep, deep dive into our small group uh, marketing uh, plan, small group training marketing plan. Um, I'm going to talk some about like why small group is what I believe is a superior model to most um, 
so I will I will talk about that. The big I'm going to talk a lot about um, being able to get a lot more money from a lot less clients, right? So and that's really like I think people like bang. Like, I need to get you know more clients. I need to get more clients, and they're playing this like volume game that's like really hard to win. Um, and that's why I like small groups so much is because you can price it really really well. Um, and you don't need a ton. I mean, we got guys that are getting a hundred members and charging 400 bucks a month and making 40 grand a month at 40% margins and, and making and, and printing some serious cash. Um, so what I'll be talking about is the marketing behind it. Um, what are the types of people you should be looking for to do this? What are the kind of offers that those people respond to? Um, how often these people need to be followed up with what type of uh, selling process they need. Cause it's different. You know, when you're selling, if you're selling someone a membership, that's $400 a month, right. You're selling them a car payment. You know, yeah. it's like, that's like what you're selling them. We, the, 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 the big knock at Gabriel fitness is like, you know, I got my mortgage. I got Gabriel fitness. <laughs> that was that was the that was the big knock of our gym. It's like you know some of these people are paying you know a lot. We have a ton of husband and wives, right? A ton of husband and wives that train with us. It's eight hundred dollars a month, and their bill that's their household bill is an eight hundred dollar bill. That's like driving a Porsche, you know. It's like our gym membership was was a Porsche, and then this. Back. Now we're back. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. What, what were uh, you going to say? Oh, yeah. And then, you know, then we got the uh, the supplements and the shakes. That's like kind of the insurance payment over there, too, right? right? So not only the payments, but then you got insurance. You know, you got gas. I mean, you're killing them, Vince. You're killing them down there. I know. I know. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I apologize to all my clients at GFP. <laughs> so we will have a link for this webinar, right? Yes. Um, you're going to send me the link. Um, remind everybody where they can get it. I believe the URL is, I think it's called Vince's masterclass.com. Okay. Vince's I, masterclass. So hopefully that's right. If it's not right, the definitely the link is, I'll give you the link to put in the show notes, but yeah, yeah there'll be, that'll, the that'll be uh, there'll be two sessions. It's the same session both days. Um, so one's on Saturday at noon. The other one's on Sunday at noon, June 3rd and 4th. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm going to go, you know, I usually, uh, book a massage right after. So I'll be going for, you know, two hours max because I have my massage right after. So I don't want to go too long to keep everybody. So I'm going yeah. to do that. But, um, so yeah, so I'll be, you know, mainly talking about how they can get more new clients, um, for in their small group market. Cause a lot of times people like, you know, think like, oh yeah, I, I do large group, I do one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't know how to get new small group clients, right? And the, the biggest secret I can give them is like, it's not much different, right? It's, you've got to define, marketing is really about defining the right person, finding the right person that you're going to market to. What are the things that are going to say to them to kind of make them, wake them up and shake them out of their, you know, shake them out of their day mare that they're, they're having. It's, it's funny, um, my, my daughter, I, I, she invented this term day mare, right? Um, and I, I remember reading I that it. when kids kids find their inner voice, the voice inside their head when around when they turn five years old. And I remember my daughter, she was sitting on the top bunk. She was about five years old. And I remember her saying to me, Daddy, I had a daymare. Daddy, I had a daymare. Right? Wow. And the daymare was she started hearing the thoughts in her head. It was no just like, way. it was crazy. I was like, it's like, that is like, I've never heard that term before, but I had just read about that when a kid turns, I think it's five or six or four. It's, it's, it's one of those, I don't remember exact age, but it was like, there's a moment where all of a sudden you hear your thoughts. Right. Wow. And that's what she, she told me. And so like, so people are walking around with all kinds of, you know, daymares going on all day long. Right. All kinds <laughs> of thoughts, you know, it, it, inside their head. And our job is to as marketers is to enter the conversation going on inside their daymares. 
right? What is going on in there? What is going inside? And all of a sudden, if you can enter that daymare and be like, hey, I got I got I got help for that daymare, right? I got help for that problem. And just just for clarity's sake, the daymare is like a nightmare while you're awake. <laughs> I hope people got it's, that. It's crazy. Um but uh and again i've never heard the term before so it's, i've never uh, heard that yeah. i'm gonna chalk it up as as my you know five-year-old daughter invented the day mayor there you uh, go. but uh yeah so so yeah we'll be uh going deep on small group marketing and hopefully people will leave the webinar and make and go make some money all right thanks thanks for doing this thanks for going off topic with me today a little bit and yeah, then uh we'll do this next time awesome What's up, guys? Hope you enjoyed the show. Remember, the six-week new client surge is coming up on June 13th. All the details are in the show notes. Just go ahead and click that link. It'll take you to the page. You'll be able to read the page and get all the info and insight you need to see if you are ready to own the marketing side of your business. Hope to see you there. Peace.